2021, using a legislative filibuster, the Senate Republicans blocked the original voting rights bill known as the For the People Act. This bill was meant to expand voting rights, change campaign finance laws to reduce the influence of money in politics, ban partisan gerrymandering, and create new ethics rules for federal office holders. Then, shortly after that in August of 2021, the House introduced the John R. Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act of 2021. This bill would restore and strengthen parts of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, in which portions of the bill were struck down on grounds that they were obsolete by two U.S. Supreme Court decisions in 2013, Shelby County versus Holder and Brnovich versus Democratic National Committee. What was struck down by the Supreme Court was the requirement that certain states and localities with a history of disenfranchisement, threats, intimidation, and coercion against Black people to seek permission from the Department of Justice prior to changing their election laws. Without this enforcement mechanism in place, the 15 states who were subjected to this preclearance would have continued to have Jim Crow free for all laws in effect, enacting all types of racist voter suppression laws targeting Black people. Then, in September of 2021, the Senate introduced the Freedom to Vote Act, which standardized voter registration and voting access, election integrity and security, and campaign finance across all 50 states. So now both bills, the House's John R. Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act and the Senate's Freedom to Vote Act were merged to form the Freedom to Vote John R. Lewis Act and it passed the House on January 13th, 2022. Unfortunately, this voting rights and election reform legislation likely faces no Republican support in the Senate. Now, going back to the two Supreme Court cases, you should know that in reference to the Shelby County versus Holder decision in 2013, the newest legislation that was merged will restore the preclearance process of Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. That's the part where I stated earlier that those 15 states with a history of black voter suppression will need to get preclearance from the DOJ before changing their election laws. In the second Supreme Court case, Brnovich versus Democratic National Committee, that case challenged Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, where the Supreme Court actually upheld Arizona's anti-Latino voting laws and made it harder for people to sue for rules that disproportionately harmed them. So not only is the focus on Black people, it's also on Hispanic people too. These two minority groups make up a large percentage of the minority population in the U.S. According to the 2020 census, the Hispanic population grew from 50.5 million in 2010 to 62.1 million in 2020. Furthermore, the 2020 census showed that there are approximately 46.9 million Black people, whether Black alone or mixed with other races, are in the U.S. According to a 2019 Brookings Institution report, the highest concentration of Black Americans remains in the South, which, as a region, houses 58% of the nation's Black population. This includes Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Mississippi. Now do you understand why the South is acting aggressively to bring back the old Jim Crow? Here's something else that you should know. Based on the census figures I just stated, Hispanics have passed Black people as the largest minority here in the U.S. But here's an alarming fact. Approximately 66% of the Black population participated in the 2020 census. So that could possibly mean that Black people were not counted accurately. The Census Bureau did note that many Black people wouldn't answer the door when the census workers came around to the various neighborhoods to collect vital information. But that's neither here nor there. I shared tidbits of this information with you because I want you to know three important things. Black people in the U.S. still matter. There are people out there who are fighting to secure your right to vote among other civil rights that previous Black leaders have died for. You should probably take this very seriously. Second, according to the census statistics, it appears that Black people are the lowest on the totem pole with respect to population. Although I was not able to confirm this, it is definitely something to think about. And third, it is your civil duty to participate in the census every 10 years and also vote in every election 
whether it's the midterms or the presidential election. Get out there and exercise your civil right to vote. A lot of people died so that you could live a decent life. Vote to put good people in these political offices so that you may continue to enjoy the fruits of your labor. This is all about you. Thank you.